Thank you, Ria. Well, this is the time in these negotiations where everything gets very chaotic and fluid. There's a lot of rumors flying around, a lot of closed door meetings. So you always have to check things twice if you're a reporter and really make sure you, you get confirmation of what's going on. Let me just give you a, a sense of the state of play as we understand it now on the three big political issues that are remaining, which are the uh, ADP work plan and decision and conclusions text now being negotiated, uh, the finance text and the loss and damage text. On the ADP text, uh, it, it went under substantial revisions between the version they were negotiating last night and the version the co-chairs put out this morning. On Workstream 2, that's the pre-2020 ambition parts. Uh, there weren't tremendous changes. It's not as ambitious as we would like to see, but it gives us things to work with next year to try to push to ramp up ambition between now and 2020 to close the well-known gap between the level of commitments and actions on the table and what we need to stay below two degrees Celsius. But the text really went backward on Workstream 1. That's the Workstream towards the Paris deal, the 2015 deal on post-2020 commitments. It, it really took the guts out of the, uh, the uh, approach they were discussing earlier this week. Uh, for one thing, uh, one of the processes is we need to have countries providing information, knowing what information they're going to have to provide in their post-2015 commitments before they formulate them and submit them. In the version they were discussing last night, that information was supposed to be decided at the bond meeting in June 2014. Uh, and it was supposed to be information that uh, countries would provide in their submissions. The version of this morning, the deadline shifted six months to COP20 in Lima at the end of 2014, and parties would only now be required to consider the information. So it got weaker and later, and these are both uh, disastrous if you're looking at the timeline of what you need to have to get to a deal in Paris on final commitment numbers. They also dropped the paragraph that was in last night's text calling for a, re a review of this information. So there are parties now fighting to put that back in. Uh, one of the issues that Uther will be talking about is the proposal for an equity workshop, which can and a number of the developing countries have been pushing for a long time. The specific reference to that was dropped from the new text this morning and replaced by a one-line sentence giving the co-chairs the authority uh, to organize workshops as appropriate under their discretion. So that's, uh, that's uh, what we know about the content. On the timing, they have been meeting uh, since this morning in informal consultations. They just took a break, we understand, from two to three to go into the president's closed stock-taking meeting with uh, ministers, and they are now about to restart their informal consultations in meeting room two. We then assume they will have to go into the closing plenary of the ADP. There will not likely be consensus on all the issues in that plenary, so the political decisions remaining will have to be referred to ministers. So that's the ADP. On finance, uh, Ian's going to talk in more depth about this, but there are two basic high-level issues remaining. The Green Climate Fund, its relationship to the COP, and the timing and the magnitude of capitalization of that fund, which is now up and running and ready to accept money, but there's not much money there. Uh, and the other key issue is the long-term finance uh, stream. How do you get to the $100 billion that was pledged by developed countries in Copenhagen four years ago? There are various options on the table, ranging from a very detailed quantitative option put forward by the G77 in China to a series of qualitative options. One of them is much more detailed than the other, and they are now considering those options under the guidance of two ministers, Martin Lidegaard from Denmark and Maria Kawanuka from uh, Uganda. There, those two ministers are conducting bilateral consultations with other ministers and countries, and then we'll have to bring back and report to the president uh, where things stand. And as I said, Ian will give you more on finance. Finally, on loss and damage, uh, the big question that apparently is still uh, under negotiation is if they set up a new body on uh, loss and damage, as was discussed uh, last year in Doha, where would that body sit? in the uh, UNFCCC structure? Would it be a part of the existing Adaptation Committee? Would it be a parallel body to the Adaptation Committee reporting to the Adaptation Framework? Or would it report directly to the COP and the subsidiary bodies? And of course, for the small island states, they want an independent mechanism that's separate from the adaptation issue and really has its own function side by side with adaptation. So this is a big a political fight. So the obvious question is, where does this all end up? Because these issues are not going to be resolved separately. They're going to be resolved in relationship to each other. 
Uh, there's going to have to be a political package negotiated by ministers sometime tonight or more likely tomorrow morning, unfortunately, the way things are going. Uh, and those uh, negotiations will probably start this evening under the guidance of the President. Uh, the obvious deal here is for the United States in particular, along with some of the other developed countries, to be more forthcoming uh, towards the developing countries on the loss and damage issue and on the remaining finance issue in return for a number of the developing countries helping uh, the U.S., the European Union, and others strengthen the Workstream 1 component of the ADP text. Uh, that is what should happen. Whether it's what is what will happen remains to be seen, but those of us who are remaining in these halls are trying to work overtime as far as uh, the negotiations go to make a deal happen. There, are still, there is still the possibility of getting something out of here that can provide significant footholds going forward for the process next year. Obviously, we will have to ramp up political pressure to get the major step forward on, on ambition, on finance, on other issues next year. But if we can get the processes lined up right, we'll have those chances next year. And that's what we're fighting for in the next 24 hours.